for the summer. The first thing I would really recommend that you do is actually clean the clothing. So remove all of the clothing and whatever clothing accessories that you have, they are all machine washable. You can wash them in cold, gentle cycle. We recommend that you line dry them. That is best. That just reduces wear and tear. But uh, otherwise, if you do use a dryer, which is fine, you will want to make sure that the dryer is set to either low or to air fluff. Uh, if the the dryer is set too high that could damage the sensors in the clothing now in the clothing the sensors they're they're not a magnet but they are like a single wire transmitter that's just encased in some plastic so that's why if you do use the dryer again which is fine uh just make sure it is set to low or to air fluff anything higher than that could damage the sensor but line dry is best because really it just reduces the amount of wear and tear but again perfectly fine if you use a dryer just set it to low or to air fluff while the clothing is getting washed next thing you want to do is to clean the baby uh what you can do is to to disinfect the baby First, disinfect the baby. What you will need is some disinfecting wipes or rubbing alcohol. Uh, you need it. This either the rubbing alcohol or the disinfected wipes need to have an alcohol content of sixty percent or greater. Uh, anything that's sixty percent or higher of an alcohol concentration is an antimicrobial, and that's going to kill 99.99% of all germs, including COVID, within 10 to 30 seconds. Uh, make sure that the wipe that you have uh, or the rubbing alcohol solution that you have does not contain any bleach. So just wipe the baby down from head to foot, gently wipe it down, and then just let it air dry for a few minutes. 30 minutes is a, is a max. You know, Just a few minutes is good. Just let it air dry out. 30 is more than enough. And then to clean just like general dirt and grime, you know, Mr. Clean Magic Erasers work really well. The Goop Hand Cleaner as well. We even have, uh, actually there's a cleaning document on our website as well, but the Goop Hand Cleaner, uh, even the Goo Gone, they have a nice citrus smell to them. And also they have like a, a gritty Pumice that acts as an exfoliant. And I will mention that the arms and the legs are uh, removable. There aren't any limbs. I mean, there aren't any wires attaching the arms and the legs. So if you want to clean the limbs, you can just take those right off, get them under some tap water, scrub away, use like a green kitchen scrubby, and then, you know, let them dry up and then use a little bit of baby oil and you can plunge those limbs right back in. But to clean like the torso and the face, be very careful around the face so that you're not rubbing off any of the paint, but uh, just for general dirt and grime, you know, get a good little lather on a green kitchen scrubby wipe away and then use a damp cloth to kind of uh wipe away at the uh at the at the soap uh, for ink and dye it's that is actually very difficult to remove uh, from any vinyl product that's because of the porous nature of the vinyl if you do have any ink and dye stains um, our best recommendation is an acne cream that has 10% benzoyl peroxide. Again, we have not really found an effective product to remove any ink from the vinyl, but use an acne cream uh, that has 10% benzoyl peroxide, like your Stridex or your Clearasil, and then put that, dab that on the stain and then leave the baby in a windowsill. It just needs to be exposed to sunlight. It does not need to be direct sunlight. Daylight is enough. And just let it sit there for a couple of days and then wipe away at the applique at the at the cream. You might have to put a second application to that as well. And you can find this cleaning suggestion on our doc on our website. This link right here will take you right there to it. Uh, to uh, how do I clean and store my product? You can print that document for future use. But again, uh, disinfecting wipe that has ten uh, excuse me sixty percent alcohol uh, content sixty percent alcohol content uh, will act as an antimicrobial. Disinfect the baby first, and then just general cleaning of the baby. Mister Clean Magic Eraser Gooper Hand Cleaner works really well at cleaning up general dirt and grime. If you do have any ink and dye stains, uh, try the acne cream suggestion on our document.
after you've had a chance to uh, wash the clothing and clean up the baby. Next thing you wanna do before you put the baby into storage is to charge the baby fully. Uh, now a full charge is going to take about four to six hours. Now overnight is completely fine. So if you're gonna be in the school the next day, uh, you could just you know plug the baby into the charger before you leave, let it charge up overnight, unplug the baby, and then you could put it into storage. Uh, when the babies are in storage, the batteries are gonna gradually trickle drain dead. It's gonna take maybe about up to a week for the batteries to completely drain out. Uh, once every three months, now this is true with any rechargeable product, they do require regular charging to maintain the life of the battery. So once every three months, you do need to take the baby out of storage, plug it in for a few hours to charge up again and put it back in the storage. So at the end of this month, this is the perfect time, you know, uh, end of May, early June, charge them up fully, unplug them, put them into storage. And then at the end of August, early September, take them out of storage, charge them up again. If you're not going to be using the babies in the fall, let's say you're not going to use them until January, uh, again, you'll want to charge them again around September and charge them again around December uh, to maintain the life of the batteries. Do not let them sit for long periods of time without a charge. If you do that, let's say you don't want to let them sit for like an entire year without receiving any charge that could damage the battery. So be sure to at least once every three months, take the babies out of storage, plug them in for a few hours, unplug them, put them back into storage. Uh, also, do not leave the babies uh, plugged in for extended periods of time. Uh, that will not outright kill the batteries, uh, but it would degrade the batteries over time. So do not leave the batteries plugged into the charger uh, while you are on summer break. Organizing and storing the babies. So after you've had a chance to charge up the babies, uh, not a bad idea to actually just put the clothing back on them that just protects the vinyl and then put the baby in a plastic bag. It's also okay if you don't put any clothing on. But the number one thing when they are in storage that you do put them in a plastic bag, that is going to protect the vinyl. Uh, many buildings and schools do go under uh, a lot of deep cleaning or sometimes renovations and a lot of moving around and that can kick up a lot of dust and particles into the air, having the baby in a plastic bag is going to protect not only the vinyl, but the electronics. So before, after you've had a chance to charge them, you can put the clothing on the baby, or if you just keep the clothing off the baby, perfectly fine. But the main thing is best to really put them into a plastic bag to protect the vinyl. Uh, optimal storage conditions is to store them indoors and in a cool, dry location. Uh, if, however, you have a situation where you're not going to be able to keep the babies uh, in an indoor environment, and like let's say all you have is an outdoor shed, that is perfectly fine. You can store the product in a non-temperature controlled environment, just that when you do take them out of storage to charge them again, you're going to want to wait a full day uh, to allow the baby and the electronics to adjust to the new temperature uh, before charging again. Uh, drastic changes in the temperature can cause condensation to build up in the body and in the electronics, uh, letting it sit for a good day to adjust to the new temperature uh, would also allow the any condensation that builds up in there to dry out. So then you're free to start charging them again. So again, main thing, when it's time to put them away and after you've had a chance to charge them, whether they're clothed or unclothed, doesn't really matter, but make sure they're in a plastic bag and then uh, put them into storage. Optimal conditions are indoors in a cool, dry location, but if you do have to store them outdoors in a shed or where it's non-temperature controlled, no problem. Just wait a good 24 hours before you try to before you start charging the babies. 
Now for storage and supplies, if you already have like the 20 baby cart or the five baby storage case, or if you have the new single storage cases, you know, the babies and the accessories and the supplies, they can all be stored in those products, uh, unplugged from the charger, obviously, and then you can Put them in the plastic bag, shut the door, or put the uh, you know the zipper on top of the uh, on top of the case, and then put them into wherever you're going to keep them for storage. Or you can also use like uh, there's some ideas from the educators, uh, whatever's going to be easiest for you to keep the babies uh, together in one place and their accessories. So you can use storage bins like you see here. Each bin would have you know, like you put this, the baby's name on there along with the bottle, the diapers, the additional clothing, the ID. That way you can keep it all together so that when summertime is over with and you come to use them again, you can open it up and everything is all right there in that one box, everything together. So using bins or uh, that you see here, like those uh, with the covers on or on the right-hand side with the just, even though you may not have enough room in a, in a storage bin, you can at least maybe label little boxes or little drawers uh, with the baby's picture, where, where you can keep their clothing, bottle, diapers, and all their accessories. So there's just some other ideas uh, for keeping the babies clean, keeping the babies in storage, and keeping everything together. Because when you come back in the fall, it's just gonna be easier for you to take things out and have everything all together uh, without things being in misplaced. So before you take uh, put the babies away, just some other ideas. Uh, not a bad idea to take photos of what you have, but make a list. Get an inventory of what you have for the babies, uh, what you have for the clothing, and what you have for the accessories. Uh, make that list, have that handy so that when you come back in the fall, especially if things had to get moved away or put into another room because things are being uh, redesigned or cleaned or whatever, once you get those back, you can go through your inventory list to make sure that you have everything that you have, that you uh, left when you left for the summertime. Uh, you also have the ability to, before the summer begins or, at the, or in fall, to uh, order additional supplies. So if you do see that, you know, you're short some bottles or you're short some wristbands or you're short some clothing, you can always order these supplies on our website by clicking on this link here and then uh, ordering whatever you need in terms of the uh, new diapers, or new IDs, or let's say if the communication adapter got misplaced over the summer, you'll be able to come back here and you can purchase an additional communication adapter if necessary. But always have an idea, always know what you have before you put everything away, and then make sure that when you take everything back out, matches uh, what you had in that order uh, uh, on that list uh, so that you know what's in your inventory. So after you've had a chance to clean your baby, wash your clothing, uh, charge them up, get them uh, in, this, uh, in a plastic bag and in, the, in, in a storage box or container or whatever, and you've got your inventory of your supplies and everything, not a bad idea to kind of look forward to the fall already. So there are some online resources that will be good to have when you are uh, uh ready to come back into uh, in, in, the, in the fall. So this link right here would take you to our Real Care Baby uh, product, uh, our support of Real Care Baby and Control Center uh, webpage. You'll find the software along with the guides and how-to documents, the control for the Control Center help guide, uh, help guide and also videos uh, for the how-to tutorials and the participant care video. Let me share my screen real quick so you can see what one of those would look like. So the Real Care Baby and Control Center webpage is right here. So bookmark these links because uh, they'll be very, very handy for you to come when you come back in the fall. Uh, the Real Care and Control Center webpage here will be real handy to you. This is your Control Center software help guide. You can always uh, download that and have the guide to you on your desktop. But I will say that most instructors, when they come back in the fall, many times if your computer techs got you a brand new computer 
or if they wiped your computer completely clean, may not have installed the most recent version of the control center to your web, uh, to your computer. Going to this link, you can download a fresh version of the control center to your computer. I do find that most instructors when they come back in the fall do have to do this. So if you come back and your computer has been wiped clean and the baby control center is no longer there, no worries. You can always go right to here with this link and you can click on the window uh, box for either the box for either Windows or Mac and download a fresh version right to your computer. And then you can also uh, scroll through here. You have your participant care video that you can watch over. This is actually the video that the students watch. And then you can kind of become familiar with yourself from the additional tutorials and videos. Like how do I do I have everything I need to get started? This will go over the items that you would have uh, how do I set up, clean up, or store my product? There are videos and documents on you know charging the baby, best charging practices. Uh, how do I use my product? Of you know adding the baby to the control center videos and documents of running demonstrations, programming a simulation. You can use this link right here to refamiliarize yourself uh, with the baby uh, before going into uh, the new school year. Other additional links uh, is the Real Care Baby User uh, Center. This link right here uh, will bring you to printable checklists, downloadable resources, and instructor resources. Going back to the web page here, that looks like. Oops, my apologies here. Go back here. Emily, is that showing the user center? It's showing the support page. I think it's the next tab over on your screen. Okay, so right here. Uh, Maybe unshare and reshare. Actually, I've been unsharing and resharing. Let me try it again. Try this. There. Okay, can we see the user center now? Yep, perfect. Okay. Great. Very sorry about that. All right. So the uh, this link here for the Real Care Baby User Center, for you, the instructor, this will be actually a very helpful web page right here. Uh, you have uh, development and uh, deployment checklists, organizational tips, uh, even to get the software up to the same links as before, uh, permission forms and everything like that. So if you were to scroll down, uh, the instructor quick links, this is this one right here is the Real Care Baby program download. This is where you'll find your curriculum along with the uh, installs for the control center and the participant care video. That'll be very helpful for you. Uh, this instructor resources, uh, you can access your most frequently used instructor resources, including permission slips, per participant contracts, simulation rubrics. If I go here, do you see this page right now? The Real Care Baby program resources. So that would you have your real care baby supply check-in form, the participant care card readiness quiz, assessment rubric. There's all sorts of documents right in here that you do use throughout this, the, the, the school year that uh, from this link, you have just, it's quick and easy to get to where you can print as many documents as you may need. You have your Real Care Baby deployment checklist. This will be helpful for you in the fall. And also uh, additional uh, documents and steps on how to store the baby for the summer. And most importantly, uh, steps to prepare the baby for the fall. Uh, so use this uh, Real Care uh, Baby User Center to help prepare yourself for the fall. And also going through here, you can uh, accessing where you can purchase additional accessories and supplies. 
So those links are going to be exceedingly helpful to you as you are going forward uh, with the babies in the fall. Going to go to the PowerPoint here. Then you have the classroom ideas link. Uh, you, clicking on that link will take you to uh, additional guides, lesson ideas, and implementation resources. And also then there are the free posters that you can get as well for the early childhood education careers, family and consumer sciences, and how to maximize the impact of your parenting program. So I'll bookmark these links. You'll be coming to these quite often in the fall and throughout your use of the baby. So they're gonna be very, very helpful for you to have. Now, additional resources that you can get. Uh, Emily, did the screen change? No, it looks like we're viewing your PowerPoint and we're still on additional resources. Oh, yeah, that's RealityWorks blog and on-demand webinars. Yeah, but it's not, it's the PowerPoint, not the presentation. Like this? Yes, there we go. Okay. All right. Much appreciated. All right. So additional resources, you have the RealityWorks blog. Uh, look through the blogs for uh, different um, uh, resources of, of stories or, or, or helpful tips that you may find from the instructors as well. And then on-demand webinars. We have a library of different webinars that we have collected throughout the many years. Uh, going to the on-demand webinars, you can, uh, you know, refresh with with uh, other programs and other uh, webinars we have done for in the past. Also check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Now promotions we still have going on. There's still the uh, trade in outdated real care babies. Now we take back all versions of babies. Doesn't even matter if they're uh, and what condition they're in or how old they are or if they're missing parts. And we recycle all trade-ins and there's a $50 credit. Uh, it's a one for one for new simulators. So anything that's, uh, if it doesn't say Real Care Baby 3 on the back of it, it can be used as a trade-in. So we have models that go back all the way uh, to the uh, uh, mid nineties, all of which can be used as a trade-in. And Clicking on that link below can take you to more information, or you can also contact our account services and they can go into more details for you uh, about our trade-in program. Best way to contact RealityWorks, you can go to realityworks.com and click on the chat icon at the bottom right corner to connect to either product support or to uh, contact account services. So if you are uh, coming back in the fall and there are certain links that you need to access or, or need some troubleshooting that you would like to have done, you could contact us through the chat if you can't get us through us to uh, telephone. Uh, otherwise, you can also send an email uh, for just general product inquiries or orders. Uh, you can go to information at realityworks.com or to contact product support directly, uh, contact, you can go to product support at realityworks.com. Uh, be as specific as you can in your email so that we can uh, give a proper reply to you. Otherwise, you can call us at 800 830-1416. Option one will take you to account services to where you can place an order or option two for product support. Uh, if you were to contact us through either chat or by phone, uh, please be at the computer with the control center, uh, have the baby with you, uh, best they have it plugged into the charger, and also have the uh, instructor key and accessories. That'll be the best way for us to help you. So I'll leave this part open right now for any questions. So if anybody has any questions, they can use the chat in the uh, in their Zoom account to ask for any questions.
Hey, Nate, do you want to go over really quick what everybody's going to be receiving after the webinar? Um, we did have a couple questions on if you're going to be sharing your PowerPoint or recording. Uh, yes, uh, anybody who has uh, signed up for this webinar will be receiving a link to today's training along with an additional along with the PowerPoint presentation as well. And in that PowerPoint presentation, I'll have links to all those uh, access to all those links they had just seen. Perfect. Another question came in. What size of plastic totes do you recommend to store a baby with all the supplies? The smallest size since um, this person is limited on space. Okay. Uh, well, the babies uh, roughly are around uh, 21 to 22 inches long. So anything that can accommodate you know, up to, you know, if you can go up to 24 inches, but really the babies are around roughly around 21 to 22 inches long, as long as you can find a tote that's within that size range, you gotta be fine. All right, Nate, I'm not seeing any additional questions coming in at this time. Okay, not a problem, but I uh, want to thank you all for your support of the RealityWorks programs, and thank you for a great school year, and hope you all have a wonderful time. I look forward to speaking with you again in the fall. We'll do another one of these uh, in the fall of how to uh, you know, get ready for the new school year and everything. But enjoy your summer. Have a safe time. And thank you so much again.